Good morning, finally, everybody. Here I am. Grab your cup of coffee or your tea, sit back, and let's chat a bit about what is going on in the stars. <clears throat> I would have thought that I was well past any of these Mercury retrograde, post retrograde shenanigans, but apparently that is not the case. And this morning I first woke up, I turned my computer on, and there was a uh, uh, a blue screen that said, oh, updates have taken place. You need to restart your computer. And I said, okay, I haven't done anything yet. So I might as well restarted my computer, sat down and did all my morning work to get things together. And then I ended up going, you know, putting my makeup on, doing my hair, coming back, sat down, went into Zoom, just like I normally do to connect to the um, Facebook Live. And when I did that, it just kept, it would start and then it would go to a black screen. And then I went, oh, this isn't good. So I just went in and did it again and tried to restart it. And it kept going to it, this black screen. So now I'm getting frustrated and I try to call Zoom. And unfortunately, because I had canceled the webinar part of the Zoom program, it said, we're sorry, your account doesn't get support. Bleep. And it hung up on me. I went, oh, you have got to be kidding. I can feel the blood roiling, right? I can feel that anger rising. And I just went, no, okay. So what am I going to do? So I, I looked around Zoom for a minute for some other help. And I just went, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart my computer. And then I'm going to clear out all my cash and cookies and passwords and blah, blah, blah. Start over fresh. And then here I am magically appearing. Ay, yeah, yeah. good grief. Why do they do updates during a Mercury retrograde anyway? They shouldn't. They should have an astrologer on board so that they know that when they do that, things are going to get messed up and they, you know, could create havoc for all the people involved. <laughs> but nobody listens to me. They didn't ask me. Um, okay. Anyway, so good morning to you all. I hope you are all having a great day. I hope you all had a great day yesterday. Uh, as I had a lot of different things going on, uh, a very early morning reading. I mean, it, even if I'd come on air, I would have only been on for a little bit because I was doing a reading for someone in France and there it was their five o'clock when it was my nine o'clock. So uh, we had to get this done. And so thank you for allowing me the opportunity just to write out what was yesterday. And so today we'll talk about what is going on because today there's actually more interesting information. Apparently we have some, you know, chaos going on. Um, today I named the show, I don't know if you guys actually get this, but in the morning when I uh, write up the show, I have to do a title and a description, etc. So I, I do that anyway. So I named this show Practice Alchemy. And I did that because apparently today alchemy is what's needed in order to get where we want to go. There are some really good energies with the sun in a sextile to Jupiter today, but then there are also apparently some chaotic energies with the moon and Libra coming into a square with our fellow friends in Capricorn, Jupiter, Pluto, Saturn, Chiriclo. And so there's a little bit of, you know, disturbance in the force as well today. And then finally, we'll also talk about the uh, Pleiadian Earth energy of the day. Yesterday was one intuiting. We started our whole new spiral of consciousness yesterday. And today we move into two evolving. So we'll want to talk about duality today, right? Two things, opposite sides of the same coin, complementary, yet we always see them as oppositional. And how can we stop ourselves from doing that? and being able to see things differently so that we can solve maybe more problems and not get into so much conflict. Okay, so today the moon in Libra, let's start there. Uh, I actually want to show you the chart. Let's see if I can even do that this morning. Um, I'm gonna go over to my desktop here really quickly. Hold on, hold the phone. I know you guys see me. Hopefully you're out there with me. Good morning, Jacqueline Lopez. Hello, Judy Wheeler. Hello, Mimi. Thank you. Thank you. I did have to put a pre-show post because I thought you guys would be sitting there waiting going, where is she? What is she doing? Where did she go? So I, uh, thank God I was born with tenacity or I might have just thrown up my hands and walked away. And that wouldn't have been good for anybody, including me. 
So uh, let me get today's chart up, assuming I can find it. There it is. And I will show you graphically uh, what is going on here. I need to get back to my Zoom face. There we are. And sharing my screen. Perfect. All right, so now you guys should be seeing my screen here. Ooh, that came out really big. Let's make this a little bit smaller. So here is today's chart. This is the chart of the moment. I drew this up at 6.43 a.m. See, I can prove I'm up working very early in the morning, my time. And what I wanted to show you is here's our moon today. It is moving through the final 10 degrees or so of Libra, preparing for tomorrow's move, early morning tomorrow's move into Scorpio. And so I thought it would be fun to sort of draw in for you what a square looks like. So we, here we have the moon and over here we have the planets in Capricorn. So this is what the, sign, the, the sign of Capricorn looks like. If you have your own chart, look for that symbol. That's where, first of all, you don't even have to really look hard. It'll be the one that has all the symbols in it. <laughs> and then take a look at where that is in your chart and then go over here to Libra and here's what Libra looks like. And what you can see is how there is this square going on. Now, if you have a transit chart, those planets that are in Capricorn are gonna be on the outer wheel. This is uh, a chart that looks like a person, right? So it's not like what a transit chart would look like. A transit chart would have green planets, if you use this same program out here, while the black planets on the inner wheel would be your birth planets irregardless of which type of chart you have, find the sign of Capricorn, find the sign of Libra. If you have planets in either one of the houses that are on those signs, you may be upset today. <laughs> you could have kinks thrown in, chinks thrown into your armor. You could have upsets, not terrible upsets, but things like I experienced this morning that triggered in me. It was funny to watch, right? I got this trigger in the outer world of almost feeling disempowered, like, oh my God, no one's out there to help me. I don't have a tech support. What am I going to do? And it, it began this emotional waterfall or flood within me. And I could have I had two choices, right? I could give in to the downside of that emotional thing that would have just swirled me down into the depths, or I could have done what I did, which was just set back for a second, get calm, and then allow that universe to take me, the energy anyway, to take me into a different spiral. So today, that is the kind of day we have. I call that alchemy. I call that alchemy because I didn't negate the feelings that I was having about the, the anger, the frustration, the upset over what was happening. I allowed that, but I also knew that the opposite side was also true and the opposite side was peace and harmony and I can get through this. So we have that opportunity today on a day of duality like we have in the Pleiadian earth energy, we have this opportunity right here in our own lives to work through conflict in a way that is solutions oriented. Remember, we're still in Libra. We can create a win-win situation no matter what it is that you're faced with. And it could be something stupid and something simple. And, you know, this to me was, you know, in my world, that's a big thing, right? To me, that's important because it's my work. And when you mess with my work, you're going to get me up into an uproar. But it doesn't have to be that way. Yes, I have the feelings and I want you to feel your feelings. But I also know that there's the other side and I can choose which path I go down. So this is what that looks like in a chart. It comes out as a square, a challenge, an obstacle to have to overcome. And the obstacle that the moon is meeting is challenging today are the planets Jupiter, Pluto, Chiriclo, and Saturn, all in the uh, latter degrees of Capricorn. And the moon, of course, moving through Libra is challenging them through a square. And the moon is emotional. The moon is our soul. And if the work that you're doing is your soul, like mine, I feel like my soul, my work is my soul and vice versa, then you can see where the upset or the conflict can come up. And this may happen in your relationships today. This may happen in your finances today. Not probably your finances, but possibly because Venus is still the ruler over here. 
but likely it's going to show up in the way that you work in the world. Somewhere in your travels today, likely some kind of challenge may show up. And it's like the, the universe throwing down the gauntlet and saying, okay, how are you going to rise to the occasion? Right? So that's our challenge. The moon is in a trine today to Mercury. And that's a good thing, right? I think that's the best thing. The trine to Mercury allows the way for our mind to find the solution or to help us get to where we need to go. So that's the moon today. Uh, the other thing that's happening today in uh, the planets, the sun is coming into a sextile with the planet Jupiter. So Jupiter is sort of a focal planet today with the moon squaring it and the sun sextiling it. And I threw this line in here for you so you could visualize what a sextile was. A sextile is a 60 degree angle or a 60 degree relationship between the two planets. Here's Jupiter up here in Capricorn and the sun down here in the sign of Pisces. And a sextile is usually where the two planets and in the two signs that they're in are able to share with one another their gifts, the talents that each sign or each planet has. And they're, they're sort of, you know, it's like a, a really great working relationship. You know, when you're at work and you, you get to work with your favorite teammate and, you know, the ideas are flowing and the work is just getting done. And that's how this relationship is with the sun and with Jupiter. So today may also restore a bit of our optimism to us. There may be about a, a little bit of good luck going through the, the field here today, as well as feelings of generosity where we, the, this is a feel good transit. And in our feeling good, we may become more generous or magnanimous. Uh, we may be able to better see the bigger picture of what our life is and or what our problems are or how to solve a problem. In fact, the one thing that I'm hoping today for is the way forward to be shown to me in a particular thing I'm working on, but also for all of you, if anything, you know, if you've been holding on anything or confused about anything today and tomorrow likely could be the days where suddenly an epiphany happens, right? Or an aha, ah, and the way is shown, right? That's the, the high side of this energy. Now in this, the sun is at the gate 22. And 22 is the gate of, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen here for a moment so I can, there, ha, there we go. So the sun at gate 22 is taking us on a trip, an involution, right? This is the, in the gene keys, this is the one key we've been studying in the gene key study group. And the uh, energy of involution, to involution takes us inside where we can find grace. Grace is the highest expression of that energy. The earth, however, is in a, a bit of a, a challenging place as it's sitting at the Ajna. And I'm going to see if I can, oh gosh, I closed my screen when I restarted. Hmm. Hold on, let me see if I can pull up something here. I'm going to go to the just now chart. And because I didn't save that, I just, I just went to it. And then of course I restarted my computer, which closed everything down. And I wanna show you what, where these are in the chart. Got it. And okay, let me go back to Zoom now. And I'm gonna share, I'm gonna share. And I'm sorry, it's not the full picture because of that banner up there. And I know somebody sent me, uh, a way to do this, but I, I don't want to put another program on my computer to be able to do that. So we just get this. So here's the gate 22. Notice this morning we have no connections, right? Just a bunch of hanging gates. What does that mean, right? When you look at this chart and you just see these a hanging gate is a gate that just hangs. It doesn't connect to the other side. So no centers are turned on in the uh, template. So it doesn't negate what you have in your own personal chart, but what it does do is anybody who has the opposite side of any of these gates, for example, I have the gate 12 hanging, so now I have this completed channel here. Um, if anybody has the gate 64 hanging, they're connected now through this channel, and this, uh, you know all, we could go on and on with each of these gates that are, are uh, triggered today. I know Asa, for example, she's got the gate 57. I can't remember if you have the gate 20 or the gate 10, uh, but it may be something that completes you in a new way today as well. 
And anyway, so that's just a, an aside, but I wanted to show you where the earth is. The earth is up here at the gate 47. And 47 is a tricky energy because it's in the Ajna. And as it's in the Ajna, this is that second center here. It is the center for the mind. So already we know we're dealing with emotions and we're dealing with the mind. And we know how that goes, right? Or the high side of that is that mind and heart align and we are on a roll, right? That we're all in on board with, one, with ourselves in, in total alignment. On the other hand, we can split and we can have our mind moving off in a, in a direction of stinking thinking. That's what I like to say about this gate, stinking thinking. And on the other hand, the emotions can take us into that shadow energy. And the shadow energy here in the gate 22, I always forget this one, is dishonor. Dishonor, where we're not honoring ourselves or we're not honoring our process or what is going on. We're not honoring the now. So we have this opportunity today to align right that for this week actually this energy of alignment now the gate 47 in its highest expression is the gate of epiphany or aha and uh in the gene keys richard red calls this the gate of transfiguration when it's in its highest the city transfiguration that's like shape-shifting right we get shape-shift again alchemy right? We have this alchemy going on, this alchemical process that is so like right there for us to play with. In the gift, this is the energy of transmutation. So transmutation, as we know, is about changing something, right? Again, changing state, mutating something, trans meaning moving from one to another, mutation. So we have muting, mutating, <laughs> mutating, changing, evolving. We can look at it that. We could call this trans evolution, we could call this trans involution, right? So we have the energy available to us today to have that striking aha, that uh, uh, re re uh, revelation even uh, of things that have been confusing to us. So we have some really good energies with just a few that are kind of also upsetting. So what can I say, right? That's the day. And the energy of the day, of course, doesn't have to take you out, right? You don't have to uh, fall prey to uh, the victim energy that can be implied in this. Um, you can just work through it and keep asking yourself the questions. Well, you know, what should I be doing instead? Because that was a question I did ask myself at first here this morning is, well, maybe there's something else I'm meant to be doing than coming on live right? What is it? Or maybe I was meant to experience that this morning so I could tell you about how to alchemize, how to change, how to transmute what's going on in your lives. Um, so there we have that. I'm going to go back to Facebook real quickly here and see comments. Judy Wheeler says, I so need help with my life path. That is in my now. And uh, she was replying to somebody about numbers uh, Judy says, Grace, Jacqueline, I am ready for it. It is also my soul urge number in numerology, uh, the 22 or the 47. 47 is an 11, 22 is a master number. And uh, the, some of those master numbers, when they pop up, actually, that would be double master numbers then. He, 11 and 22. And sometimes those master numbers, of course, they create that anxiety feeling, that nervous tension, that that feeling of, you know, things rubbing against each other that makes that sound that you can't stand, um, that are irritating. I call it scritchy, <laughs> just uh, nails on the chalkboard kind of feeling. Uh, so lots going on. And uh, if you're irritated, that's a good thing. You know, uh, uh, irritation, irritation is resistance. And when you're irritated, or frustrated, or angry, or upset, or any of those words that we can come up with, you know, that imply a negative thing. There's resistance there. And I was thinking about this the other day, because, um, no, I was thinking about this yesterday, about how I, I know from a physics standpoint, that it's, it's in nature to have resistance because it's because of resistance that things change state. And I've used this metaphor, I think, for you all before, but I'm going to do it again because I think it's a good metaphor. Is that if you wanted, 
if you take ice cubes out of your refrigerator or freezer, you wouldn't have them as ice cubes in your fridge, but in your freezer and you pulled that out, you have a, a solid block of water. If you want that water, that ice to become water, you have to inject heat into that. And then the molecules start to come into resistance, right? The resistance of uh, slow moving molecules to the energy of heat that's creating uh, that resistance to let it go, right? To let go. And when ice then is triggered that way, or when ice encounters the resistance that heat provides, it creates a melting and then it turns into another state. Mutation has just happened, right? Uh, or a change of state has just happened. We've moved from the solid ice to the water. Now further, if I take that water and I want to put some boil, I want to get some boiled eggs, I'm going to have to heat that water up. Again, I'm injecting some resistance, some heat and energy into that water to create some resistance between the water and the next level, which is vapor or condensation, the, the, the steam. And when I inject that resistance energy, or when I encounter that resistance energy, it triggers those water molecules to let go again, and now they become vapor or steam. And it's such a handy, handy, handy metaphor because that's what's happening to each of you. That's what's happening to me. We are all encountering some form of heat, some form of energy that is being applied to us. It could be the force of evolution, right? That's, it could be the force of involution. Those are very powerful forces that create a pathway for the spiral of consciousness to, for us to evolve. And when that heat is applied to us in the form of evolution or challenges or obstacles, it creates that, that feeling within us, right? Of that we have to undergo a change of state but we get into, we dig in sometimes, right? We get into that resistance and no, I'm not making that change. So enter in your emotions, the emotions, the moon and Libra today. The emotional field shows you exactly where you're out of alignment, where your thinking has gone wrong, because whatever your thoughts are focused on, it's in the wrong direction, or you wouldn't be feeling upset or sad or angry or whatever. Not that I want to take those feelings away from you because they have, they hold information. And the information in that is about where your thoughts are misplaced. So I think I told you guys on Monday that I spent all day Sunday in a tiz, right? I get these thoughts in my mind about my business. And the first thing I go to is, I'm not really good at this. I'm not good in business. I need to close my business down. I'm just dumb, right? This is just not me. I'm better when I work for someone else, blah, 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 right? It's all a bunch of things. And then it starts me feeling emotional, angry, upset, frustrated, um, powerless. I mean, I could go on with the feelings that come up for me personally, but they probably come up for you as well. And immediately, of course, that emotion takes me down that wave, right down into that funk, down into that emotional low. But I got there on my own, right? Because of my thoughts, because I started thinking something that connected to an emotion. And then that emotion, as it lowers, you know, and gets me down into that anger, frustration, whatever, is telling me that my thoughts are on the wrong focus, right? I'm not meant to be sitting here beating myself up and focusing on what's not right. I'm meant to be focusing on, well, what else can I do? What else is possible? What more is there? How can I change this? Or how can this be improved? Or any number of ways that I could have changed the thought process. So he, this is so important because our earth sitting right now at the gate 47 in your human design is it's, it's tempting us to go down that rabbit hole of anger and frustration, always seeking answers and not getting them when all we really need to do is relax and sit back and let that resistance do what it does, which is change states, change your state of being and watch where your thoughts are going as you're going through this process, because you'll know by your emotional feelings where you are. Are you in the right place or are you in the wrong place? And it's, it's, it's almost so easy that we miss it 
right? It's so, it's almost so right in our faces that we can't see it. Thus the challenge, right? The challenges. Uh, let's see, comments. Uh, Elisa says, I'm on the same boat. Those are my feelings. Good. It's great to know that I'm not on a boat alone. Uh, Judy says, I wonder, thought. Um, I'm not sure what you're talking about there. I think there's a conversation going on between people and that's awesome, but I don't know what it is. So I'm going to leave that for now. But if you guys have questions about this or concerns about what is happening in your own life, um, that's a natural thing that's happening right now. All of us. And I, I got to tell you something else that's been happening to me. And today I am, today I am going to find the courage to get out of my house and go into town because I need groceries, right? I can't deal with this empty refrigerator anymore. I, you know, run out of creative ideas of things to fix for dinner. So I have to go into town. But what has been on my mind, and I'm sure it's on some of yours, although, you know, you know, I live in Washington and we've been dead center of the uh, coronavirus. And that's been on my mind is this freaking virus. And I want it out of my mind. I don't want to be concerned right? I don't want to go to the grocery store and wonder if someone coughs, if they have the coronavirus. <laughs> and I'm an intelligent being. I am very intelligent. I even studied biology and chemistry. I know how this works. But still that fear field that's being created is so powerful that even I'm like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't go off island. Maybe I shouldn't go into town. But how else am I going to get food here? right? How else am I going to be able to go shopping? And I, I refuse to succumb to that fear. So I am heading out to the grocery store. And you guys may laugh at this because maybe your state doesn't have this problem yet. Or maybe yesterday in the county that I live in, they found two cases. And, uh, and that means that other people have been, you know, uh, subjected to this or, uh, can, you know, it's contagious. And I, I just, I find myself buying into that fear right? And whether it's real or not, some people make the case that this is fake and yeah, 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 but people are dying, right? There are people dying. 24 of them have died in my state, uh, about 70 or 80 miles from me. So it's in my face. And what am I going to do with that? That's the question. And so there are many, many other things that happen like this in our world that create anxiety, that get us in our minds and start us thinking, right? Thinking about, well, what happens if I get the coronavirus? Or what happens if Trump gets elected again? Or what happens if, uh, you know, the, the oil companies, you know, stop producing? What happens if, right? And if we start going down that road, it can really become a mind, you know what? And uh, that is, I think, why a lot of this is happening on the planet right now for us to get out of our minds, right? To get out of your head, use the head for what it's meant to, for thinking, for idea in, uh, generation, for inspiration, uh, for comparing and contrasting, for data recall, for memory. That's what your mind is for. Your mind is not meant then to take it and try to figure out how to do what you need to do next, because that's not your realm. Uh, you're to follow your intuition. Remember this week, we began the Pleiadian earth energy with one intuiting. We're moving inside. And if I check in inside, I'm not leaving this planet because of this coronavirus. I'm not. It isn't my time. I know that. So why am I worried about it? Right. So then you can, you can start to work through these thoughts and, you know, let them go. Check that one's done check. That one's done. Thank you very much for showing me where I had fear. Thank you very much for showing me where I had a blockage or a, uh, some kind of, you know, chunk of shadow that I needed to let go of. And then I can move forward. So using this energy for good, right? Don't beat yourself up with it. Don't succumb to all of the fear. Use the fear, use the anger, use the frustration to move you back to center, to realign, to move off in the right direction for you, whatever that might be. Uh, let's see, uh, Judy or Camille. Hello, Camille. Camille, it's good to see you. She says that fear hole is where the media wants to take your energy uh, and your strength and your confidence. Um, uh, yeah, our, yeah it, it, it's, it's huge, right? And our little state, we, you know, we're very 
I think the state is one of the more conscious states and um, we're very, you know, environmentally conscious here where we take care of ourselves and, and I, I'm sure other states do too. I'm not saying other states don't. So it was weird to have this hit our state so hard, right? But we are, you know, on the Pacific coast, we're the place where, you know, the, the cruise ships come and we're the place where the uh, international flights land, you know, here, Los Angeles, San Francisco, all these big cities along the way. So it is uh, a, a fact of life. Influenza lands here too, right? Other things land here too, but what haven't created a panic like this is creating. So it tells me that there's something up in our human template that is in the process of being alchemized, that all we have to do is practice some very simple alchemy to move through this time and to move through whatever it is that the fear field is bringing to you. It's in your face. Marissa, I wish we could just receive the facts about what's going on without playing to the fear. Yeah, that would be nice. Um, that, you know, it's interesting because there is a news station here that uh, I get updates from. Uh, it's here in Washington, so I don't know if you guys can access it, but their, their motto right now is facts, not fear. So every day they are online and they're on air talking about the facts. And sometimes the facts are scary, right? 24 people died. That's the facts, right? There's, I don't know, 100 and, 232 people, I think, total that have contracted it. Those are facts, right? That, that fact alone should tell us something, but without going into the fear of what that might mean for me personally. So I like that, that facts, not fear. But also... Our, um, when we see hard, cold facts, then our natural way of, of behaving toward those facts has often been about going into fear. And, and that's you know, not necessarily your fault. It's actually in your genes because the genes that we carry host the survival energy, the fight, flight, or freeze, right? That, that's in a process of evolving right now too. So isn't it interesting to see something pop up in our outer world that could create such fear that we would really have to change state in order to move ahead. Transmutation, right? That's transfiguration even. So, and, and literally what am I afraid of, right? Dying? I mean, I wouldn't be here every morning with you, but I would be in spirit. So it's funny, if you start breaking it down, we can sort of almost add some humor to everything that's happening. Not, not the, to the human drama that's playing out it, with people's families who have lost a loved one, but you know, laughing at our own selves and how easy it is for us to get into that fear. As I'm sitting here going, I'm already a hermit on this island and now you want this coronavirus to keep you from going shopping? Oh my gosh, really? So interesting. Mimi, each to see balance on all levels, be aware, use good sense and refuse to the fear mongers. Exactly. The country is out of balance. And interesting that the moon is in Libra, right? We need to bring it into balance and harmonize. Uh, Marissa, I have been reading more print media as it doesn't feel the same as watching it and hearing it. TV makes me want to flee and I cannot take in the facts as well. Yeah, there's that, there's, so, you know, there's something about triggering more than just the one sense if you're reading you're just seeing right this and you're you're taking it in that way but when it's live as a broadcast you're seeing it you're hearing it uh you are being telescoped the emotional energy of the person that's delivering it to you and if you have an open emotional center or any open center you're taking that in right through those open centers if you have to if you happen to have an open spleen you're taking in that fear oh my gosh that just gave me an aha aha I have an open spleen. So I've been taking in this fear. I should not be listening to the news ever because I take in the fear. I take in the shadowy energy and then I make it my own and I'm not here to express fear. Whew. Thank God, thank you. So there we have that. So anyway, uh, Colleen says, my business is taking a hard hit because people are afraid to travel. That is a fact that is affecting me. Exactly. Jacqueline, ay, 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 your, your thing just went by. Oh, no. There we go. 
Uh, we all have to get there someday. This human body needs to be recycled also. That's how I see it. I think that's awesome. Marissa, open emotional center. That explains so much. My spleen is, it's not closed, it's defined. If you have your spleen colored in, let me go back to that just now chart and I'll show you something here. Oh, I got to share my screen because you won't see it. <clears throat> share. There we go. Here we go. So when I'm talking about having an open center, an open center in your human design chart is white, right? It's white. It may have some, this, this is the spleen right here in the bottom lower left, if you're looking at the chart. And you see this has a hanging gate on it, but all the other gates are open. So if this were a person, this person is, has an open spleen, even though there are hanging gates. Now, when planets transit, sometimes those get connected, right? It gets connected up here at 20, and now we have the throat turned on, and we have the spleen turned on or defined. So if yours is it colored in, if this were in color, it would be called defined. And this is energy that you're broadcasting. And you know, the spleen isn't just the center for fear. It's the center for time, for intuition, and for uh, survival, and also for the health of your body, right? So it has a lot of other things besides fear, but every one of these gates can double as a fear gate. So it can create fear paralysis. Uh, in, in just like in the Ajna, this can create analysis paralysis. Down here, if this is defined, it can create uh, a, a paralysis in fear or a fear paralysis. So we wanna be aware that a spleen, when it's open, is absorbing the energy out there, amplifying it and rebroadcasting it. So now you're more fearful uh, and that can be a problem unless you wake up and you go, oh, like me this morning aha, I have an open spleen. Now, if you're broadcasting this, it's not that you're just broadcasting fear, but if you happen to be someone who is fearful and you come in contact with someone who happens to have an open spleen, the natural order of energy is that the open spleen draws in the energy of the defined spleen. This is where conditioning comes in, right? We're drawing in energies that are not often our own. And so whatever open centers you might have in your human design, you're, you're pulling in energy from the people you meet, from the people you live with, from the energy on the planet as a collective, from planets as they transit through. So I hope maybe, maybe that kind of defines things a little better for people, um, helps you see a little bit better about you know, how, how we work in human design. Colleen, Peak Prosperity YouTube channel is good with the facts. Ooh, okay, I like the name of that channel. And Judy Wheeler says, never thought open spleen lately is mine defined. It would be hard to say, Judy, because I'm, I don't have your chart here in front of me. Would you care if I pull, do I have your chart? Would you mind if I pulled it up? Let me see if I can do that. Uh -huh. That would be fun. And because you brought it up, I'm guessing you wouldn't mind if I found your chart and brought it up. What time is it? I have a few more minutes here. I don't want to show save charts. There we go. Sorry, guys. I have to, my attention's over here. Wheeler. Do I have you, Wheeler? Judy, I do. Okay, Judy. Here you go, girl. We are going to look at your chart. So how am I going to do this now? Uh, I'm going to go back to Zoom. Let me see if it'll let me share it. Oh, yes, it will. Good. Okay, now you guys should be seeing Judy Wheeler's chart. And Judy, so here's your spleen. Judy, your spleen is completely open, right? It is undefined or open, which means that you're someone who takes in that energy and tends to amplify it and rebroadcast it. This is why knowing your human design is critical. You have to know that you are pressured by the head center being open and pressured because the root center is open. This pressures you to try to make decisions or to answer questions. And down here, you're being pressured to do, right? This one is completely open. So you are completely at the mercy of whatever pressure you're feeling, adrenalized stress, this can lead you to burnout in particular because you have a defined ego center. And then you also have an open Ajna. So you're taking in 
all everybody else's truth, everybody else's uh, certainty and everybody else's beliefs. And what you have to learn to do is to be wise about what you believe based on that field out there. But when it comes to the spleen, you have two gates hanging on the spleen. Right now we happen to have the planet Uranus at gate 27. So you actually, if we looked at this as a transit chart, you would see that both your spleen is turned on and your sacral because this is being completed by the planet Uranus. But even so, that is a condition, right? Because the planet Uranus isn't going to be at 27 forever. It's going to move off. What's really true here is this gate, 50, where it's asking you to align with your values, right? You're the one here that is meant to align with your values. What's sitting at gate 50 for you? It's your Neptune. Your spiritual job is to telescope those values out to the world without feeling responsible for how everybody else uses their own lives or does what they do in their own lives. Because the gate 50 fear is about fearing that you're going to fail in your responsibilities to your family, to your friends, to your community, your tribe, your, your planet. And that makes these people become extraordinarily uh, smothering even in how they uh, begin to care for others, right? They take it upon their shoulders and it isn't even their jobs. So you want to be careful here. The gate 18 is also, let me go back to my just now chart for a second. I want to see if there's something still at 58. Yes, the south node is still sitting there. So you also have your spleen being defined right now by the gate 58, where we have the south node sitting. And it is taking that pressure of the root center and putting it in connection to this gate of judgment and criticism and perfection seeking. And now you may be feeling like you're not perfect. You're not enough. I need do more. And then that stimulates this because you are a manifesting generator where you just want to keep doing and doing and doing, and you don't know what to do. So you just throw out a bunch of things and, you know, like spaghetti falling off the wall. If it's not done, um, you have a problem here in trying to just spin your wheels and keep going and keep going and doing and doing. And it isn't what you're really here to do. You're really here to find what it is that you want to do and master that, become a role model in that. And um, other observations, you have this whole channel defined as the channel of discovery, saying yes to the right things is, oh, uber important for you. Hmm. Anyway, well, that's all I want to say about that right now. So I'm going to stop sharing my chart and I'm going to go back to comments, see how that was for you all. Was that helpful? And Judy says, I felt that. Heather Scott, good morning to you, darling. Be, me being wise about what I believe feels revolutionary, so different, and about time, and dropping over responsibility. Wow. Freeing. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and Jacqueline says, okay, I'm convinced we have too many similarities, <laughs> apparently with Jackie, right, or with, uh, with Judy, right? So, okay. Anyway, let's talk, let's top this off today with the energy in the Pleiadian Earth calendar. I'm just loving, I'm just loving the Pleiadian Earth energy and the idea that the one day that we just, that we just had yesterday takes us into an energy that is the overarching theme for 13 days is all about our intuiting, right? Getting deeper within Today we go to two evolving and evolving energy was Kaban in the Mayan calendar, which was the representation of earth or earthquake. In some cases it was an earthquake. Well, I think we've had a couple of earthquakes here this morning, maybe not literal earth quaking, but maybe in our own bodies and our own systems, you know, we've had that epiphany moment that could be earth shaking, right? That may be what they mean. The two energy is the universal energy of the day. So no matter what life form we are, uh, no matter what planet we might be on, uh, or, or what solar, I believe it's our solar system that would be included here, uh, we are resonant with the energy of two, which is about the pulse of duality. And here is our need to be able to see alternate viewpoints, not just our own. And cooperation is favored over competition. 
And the competition sort of energy come, came up well, when we were using duality inappropriately, right? Where instead of seeing duality as op, the opposites or the duals, the, du <laughs> the opposites as complementary, right? As existing, like one can't exist without the other. Uh, and those opposites being complementary, even if they were different, we have taken this to a degree where we see these opposites and we use it as a separation tool. We use it as a reason to be apart from one another, as opposed to being inclusive and valuing that my light can't exist without that dark and the dark doesn't exist without the light and one side can't exist without the other side. It's implied, right? <laughs> we have, it's all there. So we have to learn to release judgment and opposition instead becoming, uh, seeing the complementary in the things that are seemingly divided or in uh, two different places. Today can be a day of conflict, earthquake day, right? This is a day that shakes us up in some way, whether it's something someone says, something that happens in the outer world, something that uh, you know, a realization that occurs, but it's a day that creates an opportunity for us to practice harmony. And I see this, this is a, a quote I found, this is where I got the title for this morning's show, Practical or uh, Practice Alchemy. And it was this, duality is a great opportunity to practice alchemy. That was a quote in the book. So not my quote, but I liked that idea of alchemy and it is up to each one of us to create that alchemy, changing things as it were, uh, to be more in alignment with mind, heart, and soul uh, and emotions. We can throw them all together there. Okay, well, that is it for me today. I'm gonna take one last look here if there are any questions. You're very welcome, Judy. Um, no other questions popping up here. So uh, that is it for me. I uh, hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks for patiently waiting this morning while I surfed through yet again, another uh, technology challenge, whatever that was about. And I will see you all tomorrow morning. Take care. Bye for now.